Again, welcome back to System Analysis and Design course. These lectures cover the requirement analysis strategies. Our main goal is to describe several analysis strategies that can help the analysis discover requirements. So ways to discover true underlying requirements. Now, before the project team and also the project manager can determine what requirements are appropriate for a given system, they need to have a clear vision of the kind of system they will be created and the level of change that it will bring to the organization. Now, the basic process of analysis is divided into three steps. First, we need to understand the old system or as is system. And secondly, we need to identify the improvement. And thirdly, we need to develop the requirement for the new system. So again, first, we have to understand the old system. Then secondly, how we can improve on it. Then third, how the new system, the requirement for the new system. Now, to identify the small improvements, there are some few requirement strategies that we can use techniques. So one of the techniques is the problem analysis. Uh, problem analysis is the most straightforward requirement analysis techniques. And also problem analysis means we ask the users and also the managers to identify problems with the whole system and also to describe how to solve them and also how to have the new system, how the new system will be. So most users have a very good idea of the changes they would like to see. And most are quite vocal about suggesting them. Most changes tend to solve problems rather than capitalize on opportunities. But also sometimes it's possible that later it can occur. Now, improvement from problem analysis tend to be small and also incremental. And also more space in which to type the customer's address. Uh, example, provide a new report that currently does not exist. Now, this type of improvement often is very effective at improving the system's efficiency. However, it often provides only minor improvements in business value. Now, we have the second one, which is, again, the root cause analysis. Now, with the root cause analysis, the ideas produced by problem analysis tend to be solution to the problems. Now, all solutions make assumptions about the nature of the problem, also assumptions that might or might not be valid. So again, in the analysis experience, users and most in general tend to quickly jump to solution without fully considering the nature of the problem. So we can trace the symptoms to their causes and also discover the rare, uh, the rare problem. Now, to identify moderate improvements, here we say the goal is to improve the efficiency and also the effectiveness. And also we should expect moderate changes to existing system. Also, we should expect moderate impact and value to organization. Now, top of these activities can be duration analysis, activity-based costing, and informal benchmarking. So duration analysis normally requires a detailed examination of the amount of time it takes to perform each process in the current as is system. Also, the analysis begin by determining the total amount of time it takes on average to perform a set of business process for a typical input. Now, they then time each other of the individual steps or sub-processing in the business process. The time is complete or the time to complete the basic steps 
are then totaled and compared to the total for the overall process. So that's why, again, it's called the duration analysis. For example, a significant differences between the two in our experience, the total time often can be 10 or even 100 times longer than the sum of the parts. Indicates that this part of a process is badly in need of a major overall. Also, we have the activity-based costing. Now, in terms of the activity-based costing, it's also similar analysis. Uh, it examines the cost of each major process or step in a business process rather than the time taken. So that's why it's called again activity-based. Um, the analysis identified the cost associated with each of the basic functional steps or process. So this will identify the most costly process and also focus their improvement efforts on time. And the last one is the inform informal benchmarking. Now with the informal benchmarking, this will be the benchmarking that refers to studying how other organization perform a business process in order to learn how your organization can do something better. So benchmarking helps the organization by introducing ideas that em employees may never have considered, but that have, again, the potential to have values. Next is to identify the major improvements. Now, the goal here is a radical redesign of business process. Also, we should expect significant impact and value to an organization. Also, the existing system uh, activity focus on envision and the business in a new ways. So here also we have three methods, which is the outcome analysis, technology analysis, and also the activity analysis. Now, in terms of the outcome analysis, it focuses on understanding the fundamental outcome that provide value to customers. Although this outcome sound as though they should be obvious, they often are not. For example, consider an insurance company. One of its customers has just had a car accident. What is the fundamental outcome from the customer's perspective. And traditionally, we know insurance companies have answered this question by assuming the customer wants to receive the insurance payment quickly. So in this case, to the customer, however, the payment is only a means to the rear outcome, that's a repaired car. Next is the technology analysis. And here again, major Many major changes in business since the turn of century have been enabled by new technologies. So technology analysis is very important. And also technology analysis start by having the analysis and managers develop a list of important and interesting technologies. Then the group systematically identifies how every technology can be applied to the business process and also identify how the business will benefit uh, from the technology. The next one is the activity elimination is exactly what it sounds like. Again, activity elimination. So the analysis and the managers work together to identify how the organization can eliminate each activity in the business process. Also how the function could operate without it and what effects are likely to occur. So initially, sometimes managers are reluctant to conclude that process. Processes can be eliminated, but this is a force fit exercise in that they must eliminate each activity. Next is the outcome analysis. Here we can consider the desirable outcome from customer's perspective. Also, we can consider what the organization could enable the customer to do. And now we can brainstorm on desirable customer outcomes enabled by information system 
and also a new technology. So we talk about the technology analysis, and he also mentioned that analysis will list the important and also the interesting technologies. Also managers list the important and also interesting technology. And the group reviews each list and identifies how each technology might apply to and benefit the business. So the whole idea is brainstorming with special emphasis on technology use. Now, the remaining uh, practical tips uh, to sum up the whole lectures here. First, requirement strategies, we should do our homework. We should use indirect sources for orientation to the environment. For example, research, document analysis, we, we covered that in our previous lectures. Also, we need to respect the participants' time select the participants carefully. Uh, political influence can be important. Use, again, requirement gathering process to promote the project. Also, we discuss about document analysis, which is one of the strategies for collecting requirements, uh, both functional and non-functional requirements. So with the document analysis, we look at the problem history, terminology, vocabulary, and also the key players. In terms of observation method, rich data source, but remember to interpret carefully. We should focus on the rare system, not by the book. Then we have the surveys and questionnaires. This will be the broad coverage, lower cost, pretest with typical responders, and also we should be creative to encourage participants. Now with the joint application development, which is the JAD method for requirement gathering techniques, we should train the facilitators. So train facilitators is essential to success. We should have a select participants carefully, and also we should provide proving to reduce the scope creep. Now the concept of scope, scope creep is to manage, again, the boundary of the system features so that we don't go over budgeted or we don't spend too much time on the project. The concept of scope creep will be covered when we cover project management techniques. Now, in terms of interview requirement gathering techniques, uh, not a simple conversational dialogue planning and preparation pay off. Also, we should get a range of perspectives, uh, managerial to operational. We should also use an approach that suits the interviewing. And we should allow time to digest what you have learned. And also remember to follow up to confirm or clarify. And also be ready to handle unexpected behaviors. So that will be the conclusion of this lectures. Again, see you in the next lectures.